welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited that you are here, and I hope that you are having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, or night, whatever it is for you when this video finally reaches you. Today's video is a spooky one. We are going to be diving into yet another terrifying clown encounter, a terrifying killer clown encounter. Killer clown encounter that is true and actually occurred on Halloween night. Now my mom, I don't know about you guys, but my mom is absolutely terrified of clowns. Like I can't even put into words how insane that fear is for her. She couldn't even watch Cat in the Hat because something about his energy gave her clown energy. Let me know if y'all agree with her on that, but she's scared of clowns. As for me, I have told you guys so many times that I am more scared of what the human race is capable of than the paranormal. I'm more afraid when I hear true crime cases that just absolutely are disturbing or cases like this where things could have went even worse than they already did. And let's just say today's video is absolutely chilling. So without further ado, sit back, relax, maybe turn a light on, and let's get into this terrifying Killer Clown Encounter. So the way that this subdivision was described was very lively when it came to holidays. Not just like Halloween, but also Christmas and other festivities. This entire neighborhood was described as the neighborhood that did the most. It kind of reminds me of like Christmas with the Cranks where like that whole neighborhood has their Frosties and whatnot. Anyways, that's the vibe I got while reading about it. But either way, the entire neighborhood commits to occasions. So last Halloween or last October, should I say, when clowns started appearing throughout the neighborhood during the day, afternoon, and even nights, people thought that it was just a show for the neighborhood. Now this particular family who did not disclose their name said that they thought that it was just for entertainment purposes when they started seeing sinister looking clowns around the neighborhood. It took them back to that one year where like all these clowns were turning up like all over the world and they kind of thought like somebody in the neighborhood was committed to giving like a spook for the month of October. These clowns weren't being reported causing any vandalism or terrorizing anybody, they were just scaring people. Now some examples of how they were scaring people throughout the month of October were if you'd be starting your car in the morning, all of a sudden a clown pops up right in your window, giggles and walks away, which traumatizing, I think they would have given my mother a heart attack, but just little things that people thought it was almost like they were turning the neighborhood into like a haunted attraction throughout the month. What was interesting was that there was never more than one clown at once seen by the neighbors. There was always just one clown, but in different clown outfits every time being seen. So they weren't certain as to whether or not it was one person or if it was multiple people throughout the neighborhood who had like come together and committed to this. But as I mentioned, because there was no vandalism, because they weren't actually causing any harm to anybody or threatening anybody, everybody just thought it was kind of cool and it became talk of the town in like the neighborhood i think it was a facebook page i'm pretty sure it was a facebook page not like a group chat i can't quite remember what i read but it became like talk of the neighborhood like who saw the clown today what was the clown doing but the clown started doing creepier and creepier things as halloween was quickly approaching some neighbors got incredibly angry when they claimed that the clown popped up into one of their windows while they were doing the dishes and nearly gave them a heart attack, and others felt like the outfits with the clown were getting more and more disturbing. At first it started out as like a clown you would see at a children's birthday party or a carnival, and then as it went on, there was like fake blood added to the clown's outfit, and the giggling was getting creepier, and they were just getting a little more invasive. So there were a couple people as time went on that despite being dedicated to the neighborhood fun were like, A, where is this going and where do we draw a line? But for the most part, the neighborhood thought it was entertaining and was kind of playing a guess who of who was the person 
that was the clown. At one point, said clown asked to join this group. There was like a picture of the clown, but what was really creepy was the name that the clown tried to join in with was your not so friendly neighborhood clown. Now the group kind of went back and forth as to whether or not this person should be accepted, but they decided to accept them and try to like discover who it could be as they figured it was likely one of them. And all that this clown said was that by Halloween night, they would know exactly who it was, who was behind the clown costume. Nobody in the neighborhood actually threatened the clown or went up to them and was like, hey, show me who you are or what the hell are you doing? They all just kind of avoided it or laughed at it or whatever the case was. But like I said, after they said, you'd find out on Halloween who I am, the clown, the not so friendly neighborhood clown, never tuned back into the page, the Facebook group, whatever it is, you get the point. So it continues on and the neighbors are still guessing who it is. They're really excited for Halloween night to see who in the hell this was all along, kind of ask what their motive was and what their inspiration was and whatnot. So as I'm sure you could imagine, when Halloween rolled around, they were all very excited to by the end of the night find out who said clown was. Now, as I mentioned, this neighborhood was big on like Halloween, Christmas, all of the above. So they went off when it came to Halloween night. Some of the neighbors would do like haunted driveways, haunted garages, trick-or-treating was super fun in this neighborhood. But one thing that's really important to know is that this was a more prestigious neighborhood. These were bigger houses with a lot of valuables in them, high income families, and these people had a lot of assets within their homes, which will come into play later on, I promise you of that. So as the night rolls on, trick-or-treating has commenced, there's all the cute little kid costumes, everyone's interacting, the neighbors are having a great time, and this family, who didn't want to be named, or doesn't want to be named, was saying that the night was coming to a close. There were fewer and further between trick-or-treaters, the little like haunted driveways and garages were slowly being shut down and packed up, and it felt like the night was coming to an end, when they heard a strong bang, bang, bang on their door. The family, assuming that it was once again just a couple late night trick-or-treaters, opened up the door to see a very tall, very creepy looking clown standing right in front of them. They said this clown has a new outfit on from what they had seen throughout the month, but they had a weird feeling that it might be them and that they had their like fake blood like down their face and like down their costume as they thought it was. Um, and they just kind of stood there and said, treat please the family said i'm sorry what and they said you are the trick i'd like a treat to which they thought at this point that it was either one of the neighbors playing a joke or a teenager trying to you know cause some mischief so instead of giving them anything they kindly asked that whoever this was please leave their property but one thing that they noted was that before this clown left the property it took a couple of steps forward, or they took a couple of steps forward, almost inside of the doorway, to peer around and see what they could see from inside of this family's house. It was like they were scoping it out, and even creepier, the way that they described it was like how some of the people in the purge are, when they like slowly move their heads, and like you can't see their identity, and you can't read their next move. And the family said they felt very threatened at this point. They felt like they were being analyzed, almost. But after doing this slow scan of what they could see from the inside of the house, this clown slowly but surely retreated. But even creepier, the family said that as the clown was walking away, it started out by walking backwards, staring straight at them. But then when it turned its body to go down the steps of their house and down the driveway, it never shifted its head. Like its head was completely facing them the entire time, walking slowly down the driveway. Now the family felt super uncomfortable about this, but decided, you know what, it's probably some teenager playing a trick or the neighbor of sorts has gone too far, but they did make a post in the Facebook group saying, anybody else see the creepy clown? This was our experience. After about 10 minutes, they start getting a bunch of people saying the exact same thing. That this clown had walked up to their door, said the exact same thing, and then looked around their home. Trick or treating basically comes to an end they shut off all the lights, they're all getting ready for bed, getting situated, getting cozy, and eventually 
They seem to have forgotten about this experience with the clown. But later in the night, after midnight, the family would awake to an extreme sound of banging on their front door, really hard banging. They start freaking out, thinking who the heck could this be, thinking it could be the clown or whatever the case may be. I mean, your mind races when you're woken up like that in the night. So they check their security cameras, to which they see a group of police officers on their front like steps. So they rush downstairs thinking maybe something happened or wondering what the case could be. And what they would learn next, you guys, gives me the heebie-jeebies. Like even imagining this, ooh, creeps me out. The police proceed to tell them that they are there because a concerned neighbor called into them after they saw what looked like someone creeping around their home. And when the police came to their property, they caught a person in a clown costume essentially trying to break into their home, but they had a backpack on. And when they questioned this person and confiscated their backpack, they would discover that this person had a bunch of items in it that I'm sure you could imagine would be terrifying to hear that someone had wanting to break into your house. And I will leave it at that because YouTube can be sensitive, but there was ropes, tape, and some harmful items within the backpack. When they interviewed said person, essentially I guess their answer was that this October they were inspired by some films they'd been watching and they just wanted to have a little Halloween fun. And here's what's crazy. They said that they selected this house based off how fun their interior looked. So it was almost as though this person was going trick or treating, checking out people's homes and picking who they wanted to have their Halloween fun with. Now, from what I read, as I mentioned, this is an anonymous family, so I have zero idea of like the legitimacy behind this story, who the real family was, what the investigation would be, X, Y, Z. I'm solely going off of what I had read, but at the end of what I read, it left off that it's still like an ongoing case and investigation and whatnot, and that they don't know the outcome yet, and that this individual doesn't speak very often besides the few things that they've heard. But either way, it freaks me the hell out. Needless to say, the family is safe and okay, and they said they were very grateful to their neighbors for being up and paying attention and calling it in, and for the police for acting so quickly. But that is basically the experience that happened on Halloween night. What do you guys think? Do you think this story or case is true? Have you heard about anything like this? Do you think it's just a story that was created to spook people out on Halloween, kind of make them a little weary of the trick-or-treaters? I mean, how rude! <laughs> Those kids just want candy, but no, like honestly. Do you guys think it's just a creepy Halloween tale? Do you think it's a true case? Definitely let me know down in the comment section below. And that is basically it for today's video. <laughs> if you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed, but you enjoy my content, I would seriously love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button. And please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, stay safe this Halloween and I love you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye guys.